Hey guys, this is Reese Moreno with Think Medicare, Think ACA. All right, renewals, ACA renewals. I am a member of a lot of chat rooms on social media, and I see a lot of agents complaining or maybe just griping about how difficult ACA renewals are. And it shouldn't be this difficult, okay? We're processing a ton of renewals right now, in addition to a lot of new business sales. And I'm going to give you the steps that I use to renew our ACA policies. And it's pretty easy. It's late at night, guys. It's Tuesday. I'm working from home. It's already 10 p.m. But just got off the phone with a client. I mean, we're still working. Again, this is a sprint, not a marathon. You've got to write as many policies as you can during this two and a half months of OEP. And you've got to renew as many of them as possible. So I'm going to give you my steps on how I renew but before I do that, you got to make sure you comment and you like this video. Give me that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right. So I got some screenshots here that I put together that might help you with our with the renewal process. OK, so the first thing I will tell you, tip number one is make sure you have two screens. If you're still working on one screen, Man, you are just you're you're in the ice ages, I think. Okay. Um, I've I actually use three screens on my office computer and I have two here at home. Let me kind of show you and see. Look, well, you see the well, it's not gonna work. I was gonna show you the uh the actual uh screen, but I've got I've got a desk here that slides up and down, and then I've got an arm, I got my mic up there so you guys can hear me, and then I've got these two screens right here next to me that I can see multiple things. So what you want to do is you want to pull up, you want to go to clients here and you want to pull up your client that you want to renew. Guys, I've got a community of ACA and Medicare agents that we're putting together. 25 years in business is what I'm going to be sharing with you. Guys, come join us at the community, a community of ACA and Medicare agents, and we'll show you how to grow. Okay. Now, this happens to me a lot because I'm probably doing 10 things at one time minimum. So I just don't go straight into this application and start renewing it. First thing I'm going to do is I need to duplicate this screen. Okay. I need to have this screen open on my other screen over here so I can remember what plan they have and all the details on it. And it's just for me. So you go up right here where it says simply health. It'll be your information up here and you right click it. When you right click this, it's gonna drop down, it's gonna, it's gonna pull up a drop down and all you have to do is hit duplicate. That's it, okay? It opened up another window with the exact same screen that you're looking at here. That's it. I drag that and I move it to another window. Now I see their policy over here. Now what I can do is I can hit renew plan here, but I scroll down and I go to this next, portion of this policy or this this client uh, uh, screen here and I'm going to click on renew okay now when I click on renew it's going to take me to this page where I'm going to hit click on start my renewal and then I'm here back at a quote screen and it's going to bring all the information from that policy over here it's going to bring who's applying my household members my income in this scenario I've got this income here, and it's telling me that the 12-year-old and the 40-year-old qualify for CHIP or Medicaid. They have a conversation with my insured. Hey, you got CHIP and Medicaid? She said no. She's self-employed. Uh, income is going is different, and, and she just said, I've, I don't have CHIP or Medicaid, and I've been denied. I'm like, all right, great. I click here and click here. It pulls these two people up here, and then when I enroll this household, I'm going to have my client tell me via text or email that her two kids have been denied CHIP or Medicaid and the date that they were denied. Now it's on them, not on me. I am not going to lie for them and get myself into a scenario. So once she confirms that, that they have been denied, now, now I have the proof that she provided that to me. Or I can just insure her and let her go get Medicaid or CHIP for the two kids. Okay, kind of the insurance call, not mine. So at this point, here's what I do. 
Now it's time. And in fact, let's see, let me make sure you're seeing the right screen. Yes, you are. So at this point, it's time to have a conversation with my insured. Hey, Mr. Insured, is, or Mrs. Insured, is it still you and the two kids? Has your household changed? You still at the zip code? Is your income still 30,000? Need to confirm some basic data. Then based on this data that's given to me, I can go to this screen here. In fact, it'll look, uh, let me see here. It'll look like this and I'll start scrolling and I, it's going to give me here her current plan, but the renewal version of her current plan. Okay. And I'm good to go here. Now, if she's going to stay with the same carrier, I'm still going to check the docs and meds. So I can go here and I can add the doctor. I can add the prescription and it looks like this. I've added them and now it'll tell me, well, in fact, this is another plan, but look what happens well, I didn't show it here, but what happened is let's say that she wanted to go and see a certain doctor. And if the doctor's not in network, well, then it's time for me to go find an alternative plan. And to me, it seems very easy to have the conversation with the insured. Hey, Mr. Insured, look, I can renew you on your same plan. Okay, it's a zero dollar premium. Here, your, here's your, your DCCM, your deductible, your co-insurance, your co-pays, and your maximum out of pocket. So I'll give her all that information and I'll ask, hey, you, are your doctors that you're seeing right now or want to see, are they taking Ambitter? Let's check in 2025 if they're still going to. So I'll go here and I add the doc, I add the prescriptions and I'll go check. Okay, now, as far as verifying these doctors, the provider links are only as good as the doctors updating and letting the, the carriers know whether they're still accepting that plan or not. The best that we can do, guys, is check the provider directory. Now, if their name pops up on their directory and the insured goes and the doctor says, we don't take anymore, I, I, you know, it's, I've done my job. What I do is I tell the insured, look, on my directory, it shows that the doctor's in the network. I can't guarantee that they're in the network in the future. Okay, the doctor may stop taking it, and, and if they don't let the carrier know, they're still going to show up. So what you need to do, Mr. Richard, okay, you need to call your doctor and verify that you're still taking the Ambetter plan or whatever plan it is. Put it on your insured, or you can do it if you've got time, okay, and turn this into a little marketing event. So what you can do is you can call the doc. Hey, doc, I've got my insured here, your patient that you have this year. I'm renewing her in this plan. Can you confirm that you still take it? The doc says, yes, sure, or no. Awesome. Okay, now, and, and, and again, you're not talking to the doc, okay? You're not going to talk to the doctor. You're going to talk to the insurance or the billing person. Talk to them. Awesome, great. Well, I'm glad, or you know what? Hey, we're not going to take it next year. Ooh, damn, well, you guys are still on that provider link, on that provider director. You may want to call the carrier and update this because... What if a lot of insurers enroll in the plan because they're seeing your doctor is in the network, but you guys aren't taking it? This is going to create some, some problems for these insurers. Why don't you call the carrier and get your name off the list? Okay, whatever. It's on them now. But now that you know that they're not taking that plan, you can talk to that billing person. So what plans do you take? Jot it down. Or maybe they are taking it. You, you jot it down. Okay, this doctor takes this plan. Hey, by the way, what other plans do you guys take? I have 12 in my area. Do you take these other 12? No, we don't. We only take three. Okay, tell me which three. Boom, boom, boom. So I, so you have three and the other nine you don't take. Great. Hey, by the way, what do you do with the ones that have no insurance? This video is being sponsored by Agent CRM. Agent CRM is a CRM that I use for my agency for every line of business. Auto, home, life, commercial, Medicare, and ACA. It should be the CRM that you use too. Click up here to get some more information. Or what about the ones that have the other nine? What do you do with them? Well, how about, how about this? Why don't you send them to me? And now that I know what three they take, that you guys take, I'm going to do everything in my power to move them to these three plants. That way you can keep a patient. Okay, I get a client, you get a patient, hey, we both win-win. If they have no insurance, I'm going to do everything I can to get them in these three. Why don't I want to become your insurance guy? Perfect. Yes, no, whatever. Get, share emails. You want to communicate with them constantly. And then what I would do is I would set up a lunch and learn day. 
I get out there and set up an appointment to come early in the morning or during lunch, bring them up, food tray, Chick-fil-A, salads, whatever, tacos, you name it. And what you want to do is you want to go with a rack card holder. And it's a holder with a bunch of rack cards in it with your business cards. Okay, yes, you want to introduce yourself. Yes, you want to put a name to a face. Now they know you, but you want to put a whole bunch of rack cards in that doctor's office so they know to call you. That's a good way to market. All right, let's get back to the renewal. So I go back in here. Okay, let's say they're going to go with this plan or let's say that they don't. What I did is I entered the doctor and it showed that this doctor, and I just picked up a doctor that I know, he doesn't take Ambitter. If my insured says, oh, I, want Am I want this doctor, I don't care what you put me in, then this is what it looks like. Okay, you can go back and I entered this doctor and under United, it's, it's the doctor takes it. I even entered the medication. It tells me what their copay is going to be. But look at the premium, 346. Now I have a conversation with the insurance. Hey, I got you a plan that your doctor takes, but it went from zero to 346. Now you're going to find out how important a doctor is to that insurance. Okay. And if they want to take it, they want to take it. You know, it doesn't matter to me. If they don't want to take it, then I would, this is what I would have a conversation with the insurance. Look. Your doctor may not be in network. Call your doc, find out what it takes to go see him in cash pay. It's going to be about 125, 150 bucks for a, for a primary care doctor. Tell him you'll cash pay and you're good to go. Just go not just go do that. Okay, but you still got your insurance at a zero dollar premium to cover something major. All right, whatever it may be, figure it out. Now, once you, the plan has been selected, it's this easy, guys. Okay, now throughout that conversation. I have already gone to my CRM and I have emailed my insured the consent form. While I'm having the conversation with the insured about all this, I'm telling my insured, hey, I just sent you an email. Can you go check your email? I need consent to continue. Otherwise, I'm stuck here. Okay. And I wait for the consent to be signed. Now, you can collect consent via a text message, but I like to get it through an email. So I get it through the email, I'm good to go. I've received it, I hit add to cart. Okay, and let's just say I come in here, let's just say, or maybe they tell me, look, I'm not gonna pay 346, forget it. Give me the zero dollar plan, I'll find a new doctor, great. So you hit add to cart, you hit start application, then it takes you here. I will tell you this, do not continue from this point going forward without the consent form. But you should, already, you should have already collected it in that previous, you know, 10 minute conversation that you had with them while you're working on that renewal. So you go through all of that. You collected the consent. You've received acknowledgement or, or the confirmation that they received the consent. Now you go and search, pick 2025. You go through the entire app. And then before you submit it, you want to hit the print finalize. Save it as a PDF, send it to them. And then tell them, hey, I'm sending you this document. Now, I already have a workflow for this. For me, it's a matter of a click, download, send, super easy. But you can send them that attachment as a text message or an email and say, hey, please review what I just sent you. It's the final application review. Make sure everything is correct. And if so, reply back with I confirm. Once they confirm that, then what you can do is you can submit it, get the eligibility. Review the eligibility. Make sure there's, no, there's, there's not anything that needs to be submitted. Maybe income, green cards, certificates of citizenship or naturalization, um, whatever it may be. Go and check and make sure that there's not something there that you need to take care of. And if there is something there, take care of it while you have the insured on the phone. It's the best way to keep up on your retention. Hey, by the way, before I enroll you in this, I need your green card. Can you go get it? Or I need whatever you need. And I tell them, go get it right now. I don't mess around. I don't have time. Go get it right now. Now, there are times maybe they're at work and they have it at home. Understandable. But if if they can get it, tell them, to go, go get it right now. Go get your phone. Okay. Take a picture of whatever I need. Text it to me. Text it to me personally on my cell phone or text it to the CRM that I've been texting you on. That way I have a record of it. I prefer that it go to the CRM. Now I get it on the CRM. I get whatever I need and I upload it to satisfy the requirement and I'm good to go.
but it is not that hard, guys. Okay. Um, I don't know why agents on these chat rooms are, are, are finding so much difficulty. Now, if you are not the agent of record, you're going to have to do the three-way call. What I would suggest is you once you still go through the entire application and submit it, like the consent and the confirmation, and submit it, and then you'll get that error message. It says you got to call. At that point, call. It, it, what happens is when you do it that way, it eliminates you having to go through the entire application with the insured. You want to know everything about ACA or Medicare? Click up here to get my ACA and Medicare smart books. You've got to have the insured on the phone. Okay. What I would recommend is you tell them prior to getting the people on the marketplace on the phone, tell them that they need to authorize you and to authorize you for an entire year. Then what happens is once everything has been confirmed with that marketplace representative, then at that point, you're done. They can get off the phone and you can finish everything else. It's a lot quicker. And remember, you've already gathered all their data or you have all their data. Okay, well, you, but you should have all their data. Now, if they have to go through some of the questions, you have, you have the answers to their questions because you've collected it. So I'm doing probably renewals if, if i don't have to do if i don't have to find a lot of plan uh, uh, another plan my renewals are under 10 minutes okay if everything is the same for most of the insurance and a lot of them are communicating by text or email and i'm telling them hey hey is there any changes okay household change income change nope perfect easy renewal i'm still having to collect consent i'm still having to send the confirmation but i'm renewing man so many right now we've got a house we got a book a business of about 5,000 ACA customers. And, you know, we're, we got to be quick. There's just not enough time in the day. So hope that helps you out. Guys, don't give up. Okay. You get frustrated with this. Don't give up. Now, prior to me doing this, and the reason why I'm up so late, I did spend an hour with one client, five heads, and they had Blue Cross and they were having some issues. Okay. Uh, the issues that this insured was having were, look, I went to a doctor and they're telling me they're not a network. Immediately I thought, because they told me they were with Blue Cross. And I thought, oh man, did I put them into the My Blue, which is a limited network compared to the regular Blue Advantage? And I was like, oh, don't tell me I did that. Well, when I looked at it, I found out that they had the Blue Advantage, the big network. And I'm like, dude, that's it's the largest network that Blue Cross has. And you know, these doctors just are not in a network. You've got to stick to the network. Well, how do I find these doctors? Here's what you've got to do. There's a, there's, I'm going to email you the provider link. I'm like, I know I've sent it to you in the past. And he, and he jokingly says, but you're my provider link. I call you. Well, you never called me to check on these two doctors that you're having trouble with. They're like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, okay, so you know what? I'm going to send you the link again and just check it. Verify that this is the, uh, you know, check. If you get a referral to go see a urologist or, an endocrinologist, anything, verify that these doctors are in the network and eliminates that problem. And they were like, yeah, fine. But I did spend almost 45 minutes and uh, it was almost a $2,000 premium by five heads. And uh, yeah, sometimes it just takes longer, but still five heads, you know, that's almost $1,500 commission. And I spent 45 minutes. What else can you do for 45 minutes to make 1500 bucks? That's legal. Who knows? All right, guys. Hope this helps you out. Do me a favor. Comment, like, and subscribe. I hope it helped you out. Get out there and renew a bunch of people and make a lot of money. And don't forget. Okay. Now, I did forget. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm tired. I've been at this since 5 in the morning. Okay. Um, dental and vision and indemnity plans. Make sure you're cross-selling. Okay. Now, this guy, I'm pretty sure he's an attorney. I think we already got his dental and vision already. And I think he does have an indemnity plan. I have to go and check our our our, our management system to see what he's got. But I'm going to just guess we probably already have done it. But at the time of sale, don't forget to cross-sell dental and vision. Okay? It's not covered through your plans. And if you have some coverage, it's super sucky. Okay? In the indemnity plan, use the indemnity plan to help you 
help the insureds meet their out-of-pocket due to an accident or a sickness. All right, guys. Down below, if you click the more, I got goodies. ACA Smart Book, my Medicare Smart Book, an ACA 101 course. And then I have my agent CRM. That's the CRM that I'm using to collect consent and, con and confirmations. Super easy. They're doing signature, they're doing emails on there. It's really, really a good tool. And then also, guys, if you're out there, you feel like you're in an island, you got nobody to call. Okay, and you need help, or you want to be part of a community of ACA and Medicare agents, come join our community. It's a measly $50 a month. Come join our community. When you join the community, guys, here's what happens. You get access to me. You get access to my team, and we do a lot for the people in the community. One of the things that you get to do is you get to email or submit quote scenarios, and we will quote them for you. The more data you give us, the more accurate we can get, and we record the videos and we'll send them to you. We're doing a bunch of other things, but this would be freaking awesome for you guys that are out there all by yourselves. You signed up with an FMO, and there's very little support. There's very little camaraderie. You don't know who to go talk to, and you feel all alone in this business, which sucks. Okay, you wanna come join the group? And we're constantly replying to our members in that group. People are posting in there and we reply as quick as we can. Try to come uh, take a look at that community and join us. I would love to have you. This is Luis Moreno with Think Medicare, Think ACA.